Today we're going to have some fun with automations and learn how to connect our Gmail to our Notion using Zapier for free. I love setting up Zaps. I think it is so fun when you can get your system tools talking to each other and it is honestly super satisfying too. In today's specific example, I'm using this connection to send an email from Gmail to my Notion as a task, but you can use this for a variety of different use cases as well. And what's super great about this is that because Notion Mail is connected to Gmail as well, this works for Notion Mail too. So let's go ahead and set this zap up. So to get started, the first thing that you wanna do is to create a free Zapier account. Zapier is free for up to 100 automations per month. And as long as you're doing two-step zaps, which is what we're doing today, so this is going to be free. There are also a few paid upgrades. So as long as you're not using those, you're good. But again, we're not using those today. Once you have your Zapier account set up, you're gonna to want to go into Notion Notion and we need to do a little bit of connection there first. So in Notion, I'm going to head to my settings here into the connections tab. And as you can see, I already have Zapier set up, but if you don't yet have it set up, you can come into here and browse the connections in gallery to find the Zapier connection and get that set up with your existing account. Now there's one more step that you're going to want to double check because I always forget this one and then it throws me off. When you are connecting an outside integration into Notion, you want to make sure that is connected to the actual page that you're going to be using it on. So you want to find the root database that you're going to be sending your emails to. In this case, I'm doing my tasks database. And once you get to that page, you're going to come up into the top right hand corner, the three dots come all the way down to the connections and make sure that Zapier is an active connection. If it's not, you can manage connections here. That's going to take you into your settings. And then you can also scroll down to find all of the connections that you have. I personally have Zapier set up to pretty much go through my entire life hub so that I can do fun things with it anytime I want. So that is already set up for me, but you do want to double check this or else we're not going to be able to find our databases when we go to Zapier to actually set up the Zap. So now that we've done the back end connections, now we can go to Zapier and actually start setting up our Zap. So once we get into Zapier, we're going to go ahead and create a new Zap that shows right here in the right hand corner. So when I click that, our editor is going to pop open and then we can go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and name this Zap. So I'm going to call this Gmail to Notion. And now we're going to select our trigger for this Zap. So if we click on the trigger box right here, it's going to give us a bunch of different apps that we can look through to go ahead and use that as the trigger. Since in this case, we are going from Gmail to Notion, we are going to start in Gmail. So I'll go ahead and click on Gmail here. And then we get to choose what it is that's happening in Gmail that's actually going to trigger this event for us. In this case, what I'm doing is I am labeling my emails as to do emails, and then those are getting sent to Notion. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into our trigger event here and look for the new label. So in this case, we're gonna choose new labeled email here, which means it's going to trigger when you label an email. So I'm gonna select that and then we get to choose what our label is going to be. If you are not yet logged into your Gmail account, it's going to ask you to do that. But once you get logged in, you'll be ready to move on to the next step. So now we're going to actually choose the label that we're going to use to trigger this step. I have a label that is specifically called to do, and that's the one that I'm going to use here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search for that label and choose that. If you don't yet have a label that you're wanting to use for this reason, I would head to Gmail real quick, add in that label now, and then come back and use it here in your Zap. We're gonna go ahead and select continue, and now it's gonna want to test this trigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test, and it's going to look for different use cases of when you have used this in the past. If you haven't used it in the past, you're probably gonna to wanna to go into your Gmail account, Go ahead and add that new label that you added to an email and then retest. Then we'll have a record show up here that you can use for this specific instance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this email that was pulled here on May 1st. 
and then we can use that to see how it is actually going to work for the rest of the zap. So once I choose my record here, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the selected record, and then it's gonna automatically take us to step two where we're going to connect our Notion portion. So now I'm looking for the Notion app here, and in this case, the event that's going to trigger after we label an email is to create a database item. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into here to add an action event and look for that specific one that we just talked about, creating a database item. Again, if you're not yet logged into Notion here, it's going to ask you to log into your account. So you can go ahead and get that set up and then we can move on to the next step. So this is where we get to choose what database that our email is going to get sent to. In this case, I am adding a task. So I wanna go ahead and set it to my tasks database. So here in this little database section, we can choose a value and I'm gonna go ahead and search for my tasks here and use that. And just as a reminder, if your database is not showing up here, you're gonna wanna double check to make sure that you did in fact activate it in Notion that we did in step two of setting up our Zapier account, going into the Notion page, actually making sure that connection was active on that page so that you can find your task database here in Zapier. You'll also know for sure if it's the right database because it's gonna pull in all of the different properties you have in that database. So I actually have the option here to go ahead and add in the time commitment, the priority, then I have notes and categories and all these different things that I could add for this specific zap, which clues me into the fact that I did in fact pull the correct database because I know all of these properties are in my tasks database. So we're going to pull in a little bit of information from that email so we know what it is that we're doing. What I like to do is in the name of the task here, I just like to go ahead and name it what the subject of the email was. So here it was, AI is everywhere, use it legally. This was meant to be a little bit of a reminder to me to make sure that I was actually going through and using AI ethically. So I went ahead and added this to my task list a while back, which is why we're pulling this one. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this subject line into the task name. And of course I can rename it later once I get into Notion, but this just reminds me what the topic of the email was that I was trying to create a task out of. As I am setting this zap up, I do like to just go ahead and go through the properties of my database to make sure there's nothing else that I want to go ahead and add as Zapier is throwing this into my database for me to make sure it ends up in the right place. This is a time to look at the filters that you have on your database and make sure that it is actually going where you want it to. So one thing that I do like to double check is I have this sort checkbox on mine. I wanna make sure that the sort is false for this because then it will go into my brain dump section that I can then sort later and it'll go into the rest of my tasks. So think through the filters that you have and where you want it to show up in your Notion account as you're setting this up to make sure you're adding in those correct property options. Then the last thing that I like to do here as well is in the content of the page. So meaning when you open up a page in Notion and you see the actual text that's inside that page, I like to go ahead and put what the email said here. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and press the plus and I'm gonna choose the plain body of the email and that's gonna go ahead and put that into the content of the page so I can open it up, take a look at what the email said from there and then do any action that I need to on it. In this content format, you have the option to choose plain text or markdown. Markdown just means it's gonna pull in any headings that are written in a way that it knows it's actually a heading. I just like to go ahead and put plain text here you could try the Markdown version. I have not personally tried that. It may put in headings into your page for you, but I'm not entirely sure the emails are actually formatted that way. Maybe I'll have to try that out and see if it's true, but I just like to go ahead and put it in as plain text for this situation. So now we're gonna move on to our next step, which is again to test this, make sure that everything is correct. 
So I'm going to go ahead and test this step and then we're going to go take a look at Notion and see if it actually worked. Okay, so now I'm back in Notion and if we scroll down a little bit just into my brain dump section here, you're going to see that it did in fact work. There is a new task here for that specific email that came through. And so what I like to do in this case, now that it's actually in my Notion database is I will go ahead and add in a new icon here so that it actually matches the rest of my tasks. It would be fantastic if Notion allowed you to apply templates when you were doing things like this from Zapier, but unfortunately that is not an option right now. So I just kind of come in here and I go ahead and categorize it and add in my ideal due date and all that kind of stuff that I would typically do from a template, but it's okay. In this case, this came from Gmail. I'm not going to complain too much. I'm just going to go ahead and categorize it and get it into my to-do list. And just to show you what this looks like, if we pop this open, you can actually see that the email shows up here in the text of the page, which is super great because now I know exactly what it was that I wanted to do with this task. So just to wrap things up on the zap side of things, we're going to finish this out by publishing our new zap that we just created. And there we go. That's all we need to do to get the setup. I love this zap because this is such an easy setup with major rewards. Truly, there is nothing better than all of your tools working together for you. In my next video, I'm going to take you guys on a tour of my capsule wardrobe setup since so many of you have requested it. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Until then, if you want to stick on the Gmail, train. Be sure to watch this video next. It's all about how I organize my Gmail account. I will see you guys in the next one.